Hi, this is Sahana. Our today's topic is routing in ASP.NET Core MVC. As usual, let's start with understanding what is routing. In the context of ASP.NET Core MVC application, routing is a process of mapping incoming HTTP requests to write controller and action method. This is our ASP.NET Core MVC application. We are going to discuss routing with respect to ASP.NET Core MVC web application. The same framework can be used to build web API as well, but we are not discussing routing with respect to web API. What routing we are discussing is with respect to ASP.NET Core MVC web application. To understand routing, we should understand the working model of web applications. In web application, there will be a client and a server and applications will be hosted on the server. Client is nothing but our browser and request will be in the form of HTTP request. Our application follows MVC architecture. In MVC application, whenever there is a request, write controller and specific action method inside that controller will be selected to handle that request. This is nothing but routing. In this application, what you see here at the address bar is the URL of this application. If I'm a client and I want to use this application, then I should use this address. Right now, our application is hosted locally, so we have localhost here. I'll copy this one. I'll open new tab. Now I'm a client. I have opened my browser and I'm accessing this application. This is our application structure. If you want to go through previous videos, then I'll keep ASP.NET Core MVC playlist link in the description. Later you can have a look. Here we have controllers, models, views and many other folders. Inside controllers, we have home controller and tutorial controller. Let's do one thing. I'll open home controller. Here we have index action method, privacy, different action methods. I'll place breakpoint. Let's see which uh, let's see which controller and action method is going to hit. I'll open tutorial controller. Again, I'll place breakpoints. I have opened my browser. I'll repeat same thing. I'll hit enter. See, the control has reached home controller and index action method. I will continue. See, we have this page. Now the question is, when there are different controllers and different action methods, how come the specific action method from that particular controller is rendered? Answer to that question lies in program.cs file. Here we have program.cs file. Here we have this map controller route method which specifies default route. Here controller's value is home and actions values index. This means if nothing is requested, then by default index action method from home index action method from home controller should be rendered. Let's get a little more technical and understand different concepts that are involved in routing. First thing that we should know about is routing middleware. Routing middleware is used to route requests. In our application, we have different middleware. Here you can see Use HTTPS redirection. This is one middleware. Then use static files is another middleware. Use, this use routing middleware handles routing. And next we have use authorization. These are different middleware. We have created this application using ASP.NET Core MVC web app template. These are the middleware added by that template. I have dedicated video on middleware. You will get that link in the description. Here, as you can see, this routing middleware is called after use static files. In that case, it will be executed in order. By any chance, if this is not used, then routing middleware executes at the beginning of the request pipeline by default. As we have already discussed, if we don't call app.use routing, the routing middleware runs at the beginning of the pipeline by default. And another important thing is, ASP.NET Code controllers use the routing middleware to match the URLs of incoming requests and map them to actions. In MVC application, you can find two types of routing. One is conventional routing, other one is attribute routing. Let's start with conventional routing. What we have in our application is conventional routing. Can you see map controller route here? This is called as route template. Conventional routing matches a combination of controller and action method. Let's understand this route template. Here we have map controller route. This is used to create single route. 
Next we have name parameter. Here name parameter specifies the route name. Here default is the name of the route. Next we have pattern. Pattern specifies URL pattern. Here you can see we have controller, then action, then ID. This means our URL pattern will have controller name followed by action name. If there are any uh, if there are any parameters to be specified, then that will follow action name. You can notice one more thing. Controller's value is specified as home. Action's value is specified as index. These are the default values. If See, what you see here is the result of index action method from home controller. If I click on contact, the URL will change. Here you can see uh, address followed by home slash contact. Here home is the controller and contact is the action method inside that controller. Using same technique, you can define multiple routes. Let's see how to do that. Here I will click on tutorial. We get this page. I will click on add new tutorial. Now we have now look at the URL. We have tutorial then create tutorial. Here tutorial is the controller name. Create tutorial refers to the action method. Inside tutorial controller we have this create tutorial action method which returns create tutorial view. If I want different name for this URL we can do that. Let's open program.cs file. Here we have already one route defined. The same way we are going to define one more route. We have defined one more route. We are using same method map controller route. Then we are specifying name for this new route. Then pattern is slash new tutorial. This route defaults to tutorial controller and create tutorial action method. Let's verify this. I will save the change and hot reload the application. I'll go back to home page. See, we have localhost and the port number. Now what we have to do slash new tutorial. It's working. This is how we work with conventional routing using route templates. Next type of routing is attribute routing. Mostly this type of routing is used in REST APIs. Even web applications can have this kind of routing. In case of attribute routing, we make use of the attribute route. Here we have tutorial controller inside which we have different action methods. Even attribute routing is just like conventional routing. In conventional routing, we define routes using route template. Here we directly define the routes on, on controllers or action methods. The purpose is same to define the route. In conventional based routing, if I have to access this create tutorial. First, I have to specify the controller name tutorial slash create tutorial action method name. Now I'll define route using attribute routing. We should use the attribute route, then the route name. Add tutorial. Now if we try to access using controller and action method name, we get error. Now instead of this path, if I say add tutorial, See, it is available now. The reason is when we define attribute route on any action method, not access that action method using conventional routing. Even you can define multiple routes on the same action method. Now I will say route. This time I will mention controller name. Tutorial slash. We are getting this color because it, application is already running and I am modifying. I have stopped it. Now I'll say add tutorial. Now we can access this using add tutorial. This is one way. We have we have defined one more route tutorial slash add tutorial. Let's try to access with that. I go to home tutorial slash add tutorial. You can access it either way. You know what? We can define routes on the controller too. I will remove this route and I will apply route on the controller. I will say tutorial. Now the route will be combination of the route defined on the controller and what we have defined on the action method. Now, If we want to access this create tutorial action method, the route will be tutorial 
slash add tutorial. Now to access create tutorial action method, I should write tutorial slash add tutorial. This is this is from this is from the attribute defined on the controller and this is from action method. But we have to notice one thing. When we when we define route on the controller, we cannot access it like add tutorial. Earlier, we were able to access only with the uh, route name defined on the action method. Now, now we have defined route on the controller as well. Now we cannot access it like add tutorial. When we define route on the controller, the route name has to be the combination of the name defined on the controller and the action method. Very important thing to know is, when you define route on the controller, then all the action methods inside that controller become attribute routed. We cannot access action methods using conventional way. Some of you could be thinking, when I define route on the controller, do I still need to define route on the action methods? Then yes. Let's see what happens. Here I have defined route on the controller, but I have commented this route and I don't have route defined on any of the action methods. Now, if I try to access any of the method, then I get an exception, handled exception. Because, see, it is telling request match to multiple endpoints. The reason is we have defined route on the controller, but the routing engine is not able to decide which action method to render. In our application, we are using conventional route as well as attribute routing. This is called as mixed routing. If you still have any doubt, you can leave a comment. Hope the session was useful. If you have already subscribed, thanks for your support. If you haven't, do consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot for your time.